Hey there, I'm Kathy with Traveling Homesteader and Gyroscope Farm, and Piper is right back here too. Um, and today is lavender picking day. So I just thought I'd invite you along to see kind of how I do that. Um, so a lot of herbs you can pick during the summer and dry or, you know, use in different various forms. I'm going to be picking some lavender today along with some lemon balm. And I'll, along the way, I may do some other things, um, but I thought I'd share this with you so you can see kind of some options that you can do with herbs that you have around. And the cool part is that these herbs come back annual or year year after year, so I guess they're by definition called perennials. Um, and Yar San, my my other dog, really enjoys helping out too. And one thing I'll introduce to you is this nice little sickle of sorts. I call it my lavender cutter, and if you haven't seen these, it's it's rather nice, and it actually helps cut lavender really quickly and easily. Um, a friend of mine years ago pointed out to me she was able to find find it, and actually a friend had introduced it to her. Um, and so, if you have an opportunity to get one of these, I'll have to find a an effective name for it and um, location where you might be able to buy one, probably on Amazon, like most things. Um, but this. Is really nice because all you have to do is gather up a handful of the lavender stems and do one nice cut so you can actually cut more at once making it a lot easier for you to cut lavender which is a <laughs> when you get a whole ton to do so since i'm having two hands occupied by video and holding um basically this is how the sickle works and so you can hold with one hand the lavender and cut with the other in the sickle and it really goes quick. So this is a pink variety of lavender that we have here and it's just a real nice light uh, fragrance along with a light color. Um, I'm picking it. I already started picking some and uh, we have a nice bunch here and this is a nice big plant that we've had for oh years now and so you can see how big one plant can get and how much it can produce for you. And down along the way, we have um, two plants of uh, Grosso, which are really nice. And it has, that's a little bit more fragrant and a little bit taller stock. And um, that has some other abilities. And so today I'm gonna be picking a little bit of both. So you can see here that I ended up cutting this whole plant and it actually only took me about five minutes, if that. And it all happened to fit in this uh, basket here, this plant, this planter. And as you can see here, the stem length on this is not, they vary a little bit, but it's not very long, maybe about six to eight inches. And so, um, this particular variety is good for a lot of things. Um, but you can use them. Some people are using them in weddings. Um, you can use them in little bouquets, but I'm going to be using them for sachets. And so that's kind of a good thing. But you can see this plant. I left some sporadic um, flowers just because we do have some um, bees still around. But you can still see, too, that I left something of the stem. I didn't get all the way down to the, to the, there's a bottom part here. So I left a little bit of the stem there to allow for a growth and not have it be, like, die off. So in comparison, this is the Grosso, and as you may be able to tell, it is a little bit taller than the, the pink variety that we have. And so this one, you, you can use more in, a, um, in bunches and kind of in, in a different way because of the long stem. Some people even use this for weaving into these lavender sachets right on the stem, and they're actually kind of a cool looking feature. It's not something I got into, but that's something you can use here. So as you can see, the, in comparison, the Grosso has a really a much longer stem than the other pink variety. So that's why these are nice in, in fresh flower arrangements and things and um, for drying right on the stem. So in our herb garden, right between our pink lavender and our purple lavender, we end up having a couple of other different herbs that I thought I'd point out. So here we have a kind of a creeping oregano, 
and then sage, which has, as you can see, kind of just gone past flower. And so what you're going to reuse on this is more like these lower leaves right there. But we also have uh, rosemary. And so these are the some of the other herbs that we have in our garden that I'll show you a little bit on how to uh, kind of prepare. And they're rather simple and they're all rather hardy plants that you can have in just about any uh, in any circumstance. We happen to have them in a little hillside here, um, but you can have them in pots, you can have them in cool weather, warm weather, just as long as you have them all nicely watered appropriately, um, you can use them in different circumstances. Or I should say grow them in different places, different ways. you can see um, that this one is almost fully, each of the little buds, almost every one of them has their own flower open. And that's important to see and know um, because um, the, the most scented, um, the, the, uh, how should I put it? So the, t the time when the lavender has the most scent is when the first bud comes out, when it first flowers. And usually lavender flowers in, Ju in June to July. Once it's out in full flower, like this, so like this has most flowers out. Once those are fully out, it's, it's like almost just beyond. Um, so you won't get as much or as long a scent if you have them out that way. So when you see, like this Grosso, only has one or two fully out. Um, I don't know if you can how well you can see this, um, but it doesn't have all the, the full head of buds out, and so that's why I decided to pick some of these. And I'll be drying these um, for some other projects I have, but I'll also be using some of this, the pink. Um, for a lavender tincture that I made. And actually, I have um, on my YouTube channel another um, video on specifically using lavender in a couple of different ways. So what I decided to do today for drying purposes is just lay out my herbs on this table for the time being. Now, you can see that the pink lavender takes up a fair amount of space, but that's all from one plant. And that'll actually last for a while uh, for what I'm doing. But I'm going to be getting some more as well. So, but the other herbs I'm just putting out like this. And what you can do is every so often spread them out every few days to help them dry out a little bit more. Just pick them up, spread them out a little bit. And you'll see when they're, when they're dry. Right now, um, they are fairly new because they just got cut. But... For my purposes for this batch, I'm drying them all. If you choose to do something else with them, like tie them up, sometimes lavender does well in bunches and you can put them in clumps and this would be the right time to tie them in clumps or in, in bunches. So if you do decide to do that, this would be the time to, to tie them in bunches because they hang better. Um, but for this, for what I'm using this for, um, it'll be fine to dry them this way. Uh, so just make sure you know what you're going to be using your herbs for and how you want to store them because sometimes it does matter. So on to the oregano. Now the oregano, when you dry this, or, or if you want to see, this is kind of what it looks like. And it does flower. There's a little bit of a purpley flower that some of them offer. Some of them have a bit of a white flower, depending on the variety. Um, but oregano is kind of cool too, because they have a couple of different varieties of scents. In fact, this, I believe this is the orange variety. There's actually an, an oregano that smells a little bit like 
orange or kind of uh, citrusy. And this does have a little bit of a citrus scent to it, but definite oregano scent as well. And so depending on what you're interested in and what you want to do with it, you can get different. There's even a variegated one that has a little bit, it's like yellow and green or white and green. Um, so getting some different colored herbs or smelling herbs is actually rather pleasant. So you can kind of have a variety. But simply put this, if you if you cut this, that's, I mean, that's kind of how it looks, cut. It's rather short. If you simply put it aside to dry, it'll dry like that. And you can then um, just break it up and put it in a, in a glass or something. Or like a glass or plastic jar for storage, which is rather nice. Now, as, the, as far as oregano go, or um, I'm sorry, not oregano. We were just were talking about that. As far as rosemary, this is what rosemary looks like. And I just picked it. And it has this nice, thick stem to it. Now, the green is what you'll mostly want to use um, in your cooking. Or um, some people will use things like rosemary and sage um, in punks. Uh, I don't, well, not punks. Um, in basically bundles of... Um, bundles of herbs to help cleanse a home. I'll have to find the name on that one to make sure. Um, but a, a Native American friend of mine um, used of, uh, the bundles of dried herbs to help cleanse homes um, as part of, um, I guess, something that they believed to help just clean a home out of like bad spirits and things. Um, so with that in mind, the other, the other herb that I have um, is sage. And this is one variety of sage. Um, you can see it's rather tall. Um, the commonality is this leaf, and that's the what you're going to use in cooking. Um, but you can also use the stems and for burning things, like I just mentioned, or even fire starters. Um, so having the ability to use your herbs in a couple of different ways is actually rather nice. Um, so I'm going to be drying most of these. But something else that I actually may do with the rosemary and the sage is make sage oil or rosemary oil. And, and basically all you do is you take a, a particular oil of your choice. I'll either use olive oil or some vegetable oil and soak that for, for about a month. I'll put all the herb, the entire herb in a jar and fill it with oil and then I can in the, in a month when it's kind of perked together um uh, and put it in a cool dry place i'll just take out the take out the herbs and then the scent and the a little bit of the essence of the herb has gone into the oil and then i can cook with it and actually those types of cooking oils are a little on the expensive side <laughs> so if you can make them yourself just with what you have that's kind of a cool bit um so these herbs are really easy to grow, easy to use, and you can use them in a variety of ways. Um, from, like I said, the Native American cleansing rituals to, you know, in the case of the lavender, you can dry them and have them in sachets in your home. Um, you can put them in oils uh, for a variety of uses. Um, but having herbs is actually kind of nice. Um, because you can, they're nice plants to have outside. They, they beautify your yard or your, um, your garden area, but they also can improve, improve your home, um, in very simple ways. So I hope this has helped you a little bit and here's to planting more good things. And thanks for stopping by the Traveling Homesteader and Gyroscope Farm. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button and leave a comment. Tell me what you think is is a good herb to have in your area or what you use your herbs for outside of drying or in oils, um, I'd be curious to know. So thanks for stopping by and I hope you have a great day.